Good evening, everyone. This is Yvonne, and I'm actually testing out this YouTube Live. I'm not sure if it's actually working right now because the last time I made a live YouTube video was probably back in 2018, so I'm pretty surprised that this is working again. They made a, a stipulation that you needed at least a 1,000 uh, members or something like that, so it's pretty awesome. So I know that nobody's watching this. At least I don't think anybody's online right now. But I'm just checking out this YouTube live. I didn't have anything particularly in store to talk about. I was just amazed that YouTube is actually allowing me to uh, do YouTube live videos again. I think it was back in February or March of 2018 or 19 that I made my last YouTube live video. So pretty awesome. And I don't have much to say. I don't know if anybody knows uh, the content I usually make on this channel. It's basically, if you look back from video one on this page, you'll just see it's about my life, my testimony in Jesus, how I'm living day to day as a targeted individual here in the United States of America. So um, if you're not too familiar about that, oh, hey, how are you? Uh, you know. You can uh, just check that out, uh, targeted individuals, organized stalking and whatnot. But like I said, I didn't have anything planned to speak about this night. I was just actually really checking out this YouTube live. And, I, you know, I really did you uh, enjoy when I was able to do this. I would take long walks in the park and film myself there when I was first getting acquainted with all of this. But, yeah, I hope that everybody out there is doing well tonight. Here in Charlotte, it seems to be a clear night. There was some clouds this morning, but the sun ended up coming out. I hope that you're all keeping well, healthy, and mentally and emotionally and physically, you know, well and healthy. Me, myself, I've been pretty, I don't want to say I've been pretty quiet. I mean, I, I go out a lot and I evangelize, so I know it might be a little strange for a lot of people. The way I evangelize and the way I, I sometimes preach may not be for everybody, but, you know, life is short to be concerned about so many things, about so many rules and so many stipulations, <laughs> regulations. So just live your life. Enjoy it. Um, focus on the Lord. Keep your mind and your, and your soul on him because, my friends, so many things in this life are going to be pulling you in different directions. And the best thing you could do is just live for the Lord because he's going to want the best for you. He's going to bring the best out of you if you have a strong relationship with, uh, with God. I don't think the storm hit over here. I think uh, yesterday, what was it? It rained a little bit. It rained some, a little bit, I guess, earlier today. But today I didn't, at least I didn't realize I didn't see it rain a lot. I think when I came home uh, from work, I saw that the power had gotten um, gone out here in my house. So I saw the lights blinking and stuff like that. But other than that, I not today. I didn't see too much um, things happening here. How about down around your way? Is it like, did it start raining or anything like that? Or heavy winds or whatnot? That a tropical storm or something that I guess it was Marco and Laura or something. No, I don't know if there's like a lag here for me um, speaking and looking at the uh, what people are. Uh, well, the one person is writing over here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we just got rain too. So, yeah, I was actually trying to upload something for one of my classes. So, I try to keep myself focused on that, keep myself busy. And yeah, so right now it's kind of peaceful here in my room. Um, what else was I doing? Oh, I'm actually having a hard time. I was trying to film. I needed to do something for my class and I was trying to make like an introduction. I had to make an intro. That's another reason why I'm here. I was trying to make an introduction video and I did it on my, I, I tried uploading it through the, through the website here on the computer because we're supposed, we were, they asked us to like film ourselves and introduce ourselves for one of our classes, but I can't seem to get it from my telephone onto, um, like the wet, like the school site here. So I was trying to figure that out, like putting it on, well, actually, I think it might've just uploaded. So let me check this out. 
<laughs> my target. That never, that, let me just put it this way. Targeting never stops. Even when you don't see it, it doesn't stop. So I don't, I don't want to say you become used to it. It's just that when does it really, if you're not with yourself, like, you know, if I'm not here by myself, this is, this is, this is paradise for me being in my room by myself. It's not that I'm, I'm antisocial. It's not that I don't like being around people. It's just that this is, this is, even though, you know, there's other things that exist, like directive energy weapons and, and you know, everything else with being a TI, I, I have experienced those things, you know, by myself here in my room. But other than that, there's nothing else that um, outside of here. It's just a war zone. Let me just tell you, when, when I leave my house, it's like you'd think that I literally walked into a bank and I stole like thousands of dollars and I'm walking around with money on my back or something that like I, it looks like someone's ready to tackle me on the fl on the floor with their car or something. Like it's seriously that it's that serious, my targeting. It's just that it gets it's more intense. It's it gets intense. I don't even know what what is done, what what it is that is done to increase it. It's because I know there's certain things like if I talk too much or when I go out and evangelize and say I go out with my microphone and I go preach. I, yeah, it gets pretty like whatever you want to say. It gets pretty hot. People always think it's so hot. It's so hot. I'm like, when is it not hot? <laughs> it's always hot on my block. And I'm like, I don't even know why half of the time. <laughs> Amen. I was just about to watch something of viewers here on my phone while I was making um trying to upload this video that I had to upload for my class. And I'm just like, I didn't realize it was you until I started seeing the video because when I got the email, it had a different name. But then I'm like, wait a minute, that's Carlton. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then I saw it and then I'm like, well, let me check it out. Before, like once I get all, when I turn my lights off, I'm like, I'll watch it when I, once I'm in bed. I'll check it out in a little bit once I get off uh, the computer and stuff like that. <laughs> Amen. But yeah, this is, this is like my little, right now, this is my safe haven. This is where I pray. This is where I relax. This is where I, I turn on my music and just try to focus on the Lord because I can tell you my thoughts, sometimes they go out of control and I'm thinking a whole bunch of things that, you know, it's just, I feel bad for that sometimes because I'm just like, I was never like that, like that, that bad with my thoughts where it's just like, they're all over the place. Sometimes if I don't pray, I don't even know where my, like, I don't know how I would be able to focus. I wouldn't be able to focus without like having like a, a disciplined prayer life in my life. I mean, that's how I see it. I guess there's pros and cons with seeing a TI. Do I don't know if I'd be this close to the Lord if I did if I wasn't being, you know, under so much pressure all the time. Because when I pray, the more I seek the Lord, it's the only way I really get real peace in my mind and in my heart. I, I just, I, I don't know. This is just absurd. I don't know. I don't really have any words. Like I didn't have any pre anything prepared to speak about about this. So anybody who's watching, um, yeah, this is just you know, it's just such a way where it's just like you know, oh look, look, I'm smiling, I, I'm dancing, I'm being silly. But my friends, it's just the mental the mental persecution. It, it really is like it's a type of. It's a type of abuse that is just not, is not as, I don't want to say respected, but it's not as taken as seriously as any other type of abuse in a person's life. Because what's the first thing people say? Oh, you're being a baby. You're complaining. Like they always put it down to make it seem like there's worse things in the world than people calling you names. And like, it's not just about people calling me names. It's not just about people degrading me. It's the fact that it's not just one person when there's so many people involved in it, where it's just like that cloud of judgment is with you everywhere you go, even into a bathroom. It's just like, sometimes you just like, how do you deal with that? How can you deal with that type of stress? And that's why I think I, I, 
people think I went, I think my family thought I went crazy. My first, I think back in 2014, and they would just look at me. They're like, you know, they probably, they knew that, you know, they never really talked to me about it. It's very like vague and um, they don't never really like to talk about it. They really changed the subject. But when it first started happening, I just went off the deep end. I, I just threw myself in the word and Jesus and the church. And I, I, you know, that's how I grew. I was a baby Christian when this all started in my life. So I, I, I was letting a lot of like my old lifestyle and habits go. So, you know, this has been a, a journey in front of the people who are like, you know, basically you're being watched by a lot of people. And so I've been growing in my faith in Jesus while people are, uh, are basically the, the ones, I guess, who are really in charge of all of this, and they're the ones who think they have the right to to really judge my journey in, in Jesus Christ when the whole thing is about him pulling you out of sin, out of darkness, and redeeming your whole entire existence into his light, into his truth, into his peace, into his faith, and letting go of anything of the past. The thing with targeting is that it's not you who needs to let go. It's not me who needs to let go. It's It's them <laughs> they won't let go and so they they're constantly trying to keep you in the past like they want to have control over your thoughts and your mind and it's just it's a lot to to handle you know when all you want to do is just if it was up to me i i just want to just be in just like everyone else and focus in my life and do and just hey if you want to forget that i exist forget that i exist but i feel like that's not even an option for me and it's like, it's, it sucks when you're aware of it. When you're aware this is happening, if you're not aware this is happening, you're not aware of it, you understand? But when you're aware that this is all going on and it's just like, you know why you're being marginalized or or you're being kind of like pushed out of things because you're aware of it. It's not the same. You can't just be, I'm not oblivious to it. So it's just like, once they make you aware of it, it makes you even more paranoid. It can make you really paranoid. So God saved me from going off the deep end and just trying to fight people all over the place. I mean, I almost, I think I almost got in a couple of fights in the beginning. And I'm not like, you. I can't see myself either fighting people. But um, yeah, I think when this first started happening, you don't know why things are happening or people are approaching you in a certain way. and You get all defensive. And so I felt like really freaked out in the beginning with all this. <laughs> yeah, I was just seeing that the world worldwide TI day. Well, to me, basically, if I guess a gang to me, I mean, any I think to, like when I say gang stalkers, I don't even know what that is, like in the sense that I guess it's anybody who has to be in your life who is trying, who has to be there as a representative of the ones who are trying to control your life. So that's why I tell like the few times that I got in fights with my own family, you know, when I'm really pissed off or something, I'll just be like, you're a gang stalker to my own sister and to my brother, or to, I've said that to them before and they get mad. They're like, Oh, well, I, I, uh, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm not part of any, I'm like, I, do you, I don't know if you guys get when I say that. It's not the fact that I'm saying they are responsible for what's going on in my life or they're responsible for what is, you know, for what has transgressed or whoever put me on this weird watch list. That's never what I'm saying. What I'm saying when I call my own family a gang stalker is because they're doing things to me to freak me out or to gaslight me or to, you know, uh, belittle me in my own home on a constant basis or anytime I, I just do things or I try to talk to them, they ignore me or it, I can only have conversation with them when they approach me or they want to have conversation because I think everything they say about, I, they hear they're actually sending out a different um, message. I don't know what the, how it's working through text messages or through notify. I don't even know. I told them like, when you have family in your living room, and when you walk down from your bedroom and they're all on their phone or whatever, I mean, obviously they must be communicating some way that has to do with the phone. So to me, I'm like, isn't it just easy for me to one day while they're while they're doing something, grab the phone and see what they're actually writing about me? I could really do that if I was really 
if I really thought that would make a difference. And I don't, I just don't want that confrontation with my family because it's just, I feel like it's once you get in that negative state of mind, it really causes a domino effect and things get worse and worse and worse. It really is like a vacuum of the devil. Like he wants you to get to destroy whatever relationship. I'm not just trying to hold on to crumbs with my family, but that's the love of Christ is that there's a time where you, you need to keep silent and a time when you need to talk. But there's a time like right now I'm at, with, with the way that I seek the Lord, I'm able to maintain a relationship with my family regardless of this by praying with if I didn't have Christ, if I didn't pray at five o'clock or 12 o'clock or eight o'clock or seven o'clock at night, I don't think I'd be able to deal with like with this in the beginning. Like I said, in the beginning it was really bad. I was always fighting with my family. I was fighting a lot because I was getting pissed off the fact that I'm like, what is it that you guys know? And you don't want to tell me, like, if I was really lying about something, I would tell you, like, I don't want to suffer and I don't want my family to suffer. And I don't, I just don't want to be lost in a freaking oblivion. And I'm like, if something can be like, if there's something like that, I really knew that I did. <laughs> I would like, Lord Jesus. I'm like, literally, I, if I walk out, there's like 10 million cars. Like who wants to live like this? I'm like, I, I wish I could say I'm like a soul I, that I had some sort of mental illness or I blocked out a memory, but I don't know how they're doing these things. I just know that they're doing things. They're manipulating things, videos and pictures. And they're, it's just everything. I, I mean, I think that my room would be full of stuff because I feel like they're always insinuating theft in my life. That that's their main gang stalker thing is theft in mine. It's theft and... um something else. And I'm like, that's not who I was. I mean, I made stupid mistakes, but they use every single area of your life from your past to build a different portfolio or character of you. And I can't, I can't fight that. You know, I mean, no one wants to sit down and, and say, Hey, Yvonne, is this true? Is this true? I mean, there must be thousands of people by now that have looked in and the TI's life. How are you going to sit there and be able to explain your life your experiences, your journey with every single person who already has it out for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey man. Yeah. I sleep with the audio Bible sometimes. Yeah. I like, I'll play. I'm answering um, what you said. You, you sleep with an audio Bible playing. I sleep with um, every now and then I used to do it. Some, sometimes when I feel like I'm having really bad dreams I get like a lot of um, like sexual dreams. So I don't know if it's like a sexual demon or some sort of, or like they're manipulating my dreams. I don't know to give people something. Cause I, if they're reading your thoughts and they're reading, kind of trying to make it decipher your dreams, I think in order to make it interesting, they're, they're, they're testing, they can manipulate dreams because there's just, it's just too much. I mean, I didn't, when you know your life has changed, there's certain habits or there's certain things in your life that's changed then you know there's there's another thing that's going on there's something else intervening with your sleep there's something intervening with your dreams with your thoughts and and um all this stuff so i'll play sometimes like uh prayer warfare videos and i'll i'll put my you know i'll fall asleep and i'll put my my cell phone under the blanket so the light's not on i'll play a youtube video with somebody that's like binding and loosening demons and stuff like that and then declaring the glory of god the peace and the joy and the faith also while i'm sleeping that's what i'm absorbing because i feel like there's a third party that's also trying to make me absorb like yvonne you're not worth and you're not valuable and you're this and you're that like i mean it's radio frequency so I'm, that's what they say they use right a lower frequency to a frequency we're not able to hear audibly through our ears but our brain is picking it up. And so those things, you know, while you're walking in your day, you wonder why you're more sensitive to certain things or to certain objects and to certain things. I think it's because basically you're being, they're aiming, they're aiming at you in so many different ways, visually, through your hearing, through audio, through your dreams, through your thoughts, through the things people are doing, you know, tiny little things. But when it's so many people are involved, you become sensitized. And so since I understand that, like, I didn't know that in the beginning, I didn't know any of this until I started really looking into it. And so with the colors, I'm not really sensitive to the colors that used that, 
that was strange to me in the beginning because I'm like, why is everybody wearing like yellow or why is everyone wearing red or why is it? And then I started to realize my targeting, the red means like I want that. So if I like, the, you know, when they have this thing with trying to accuse me of being like freaking like, I don't even want to go there right now, but like a pedophilia and stuff like that. And when you see then that they put the red shirts on the kids and I feel like that's they're trying to insinuate that I want the kids. So they're putting red shirts on the kids and stuff like that, or something that to, to make me notice that thing to say, Hey, that that's what you were saying, or you were insinuating that Yvonne, or you were thinking that Yvonne. So that, that hasn't really sensitized me to piss me off or anything. It's just, I noticed that I am aware they do that to people. And I know, I do know that those things affect the sensitizing is different with everyone that you, depending on, on what they're aiming at you more but with me it's just like I just get tired sometimes you know I'll cry a little bit sometimes because I'm just like you know I was never thinking that way before you know I was never paranoid about what people thought about me in this way and so I really have to go I really have to pray hard to break that off of my mind because it's just like I'm like no they're not gonna make me paranoid about being myself and then myself was not a pedophile myself was not a, like a a freaking grandmaster, uh, grand, like a freaking what Scarface. I'm not freaking here sitting on a round table with a cigar in my mouth trying to figure out, <laughs> you know, dealing with narcotics or anything like that or doing it or like I just, you know, you try to think of every single thing and I'm just like, what in the world? I do know I made some stupid mistakes in my youth and in my like teenage, not teenage years, more like my mid in between my 20s and just. You know, things that obviously that I didn't know I had to testify to everybody about. Like at the end of the day, like I know what I've repented about in my life. I know the stupid mistakes I've made. But these are things that I'm like, if that if this is about like your own personal mistakes, why would you be torturing somebody mentally the rest of their life? I mean, then that means that everybody else is perfect except you. So how could that be or except me? So I, I got tired of thinking that way. And every now and then I think, you know, like I'm speaking about it now. Yeah. The, this is just how it is right now. So I, I paint, I try to just like go out and evangelize. The more I seek the Lord, the less effect it has on me. But sometimes I'm just tired. I'm just tired of praying. <laughs> sometimes but I pray a lot I love to pray don't get me wrong I love to pray but it's I get tired sometimes from praying it's just like the moment I get tired it's like I feel like I let my guard down and then I feel I feel the effects of the dreams I get a lot I get a lot of sexual dreams it's just out of control and I don't even remember a lot of them I used to remember my dreams all the time I used to remember them like no problem. It didn't matter if the dream felt like it was a minute long or if it was hours. I would remember, I used to remember my dreams so clearly and so vividly. It doesn't matter what, you know, I just used to remember them. Now it's been years. Like I don't have clear, I cannot, it's really hard for me to remember my dreams. And I pray to God. I don't know if it's like a mental block. It, they, they're, they're doing something. There's witchcraft going on. But if I, if so many people are looking into your life, that means that can be a possibility they're doing things to you. But there's nothing greater nor stronger than the blood of Jesus Christ. And so that's why I'm just like, God is just exercising our faith. We're meant to be prayer warriors, you know, use the sword of the spirit. I mean, what, what, if you actually look at it, what else in your life has gotten stronger? Well, not for everybody, of course, but for most of us, I think it's our faith. Like you have to believe in something besides them, because if it was really, if, if you're, I don't know if it, how many agencies there are, but obviously they're aware that these things happen, that people use these things and people have a hold of these corporations, jobs and whatnot. And then they can get groups of people or brotherhoods to, to work in this thing. So I, it's just so many people that can be involved. It's just like, I, can't, I never knew this existed until it started happening to me. And you're just like, you feel like you're in a completely different like world. It's like, how did they have, how did they get 
you must have a like to change your environment and to change your interaction with people. It's just like my my good lord. It's like I didn't I never knew that they could do stuff like this. And then I'm like, was I, I, I wasn't a political activist. I wasn't like, I didn't consider myself a whistleblower. I wasn't going, like I worked in jobs and I always wondered why I always got a hard time. Why I always had a hard time or why I always felt like I got picked on. And now I know that they, they must've been intervening in my life for a long time without me knowing it's the only time I really knew blatantly within 2014 where it's just, it's so obvious. Like you cannot, like you obviously want you to know that they're watching you, but they must've started before that. And so when you, I look back in my life, I'm just like, wow, like a lot of these things that were driving me nuts was probably them. Like I felt so like helpless sometimes. I'm like, why is it that I start a job with all my heart and so jolly with all my soul and then it all just comes, falls apart. And, or it didn't fall apart, but it was just so hard in the sense that I'm like, why does everybody go through this? Now I'm like, no, not everybody does. But anyways, like I said, I don't want to bring everybody down with, <laughs> with all of this. Because I know if you are, if you go through this, it's already, uh, it's not easy. But yeah, keep on praying. Keep on just declaring the word of the Lord. I think they have, like, people are praying, you know, for this stuff to be exposed. This is something that I don't feel like it just, it's just, it's not possible for it just to be changing a law. It's just like, if they're able to do this, if evil, evil always finds a way to manifest itself in this world because we're in a fractured world. And if we want to overcome that evil that's found, it's found, it's, uh, it's risen its ugly head through slavery here in the United States or different types of weird persecutions all over the world. world what we can do is just basically pray, pray together to break that chain, to see where God can lead or use people to be able to make a difference in this type of problems or, or, you know, how to, how to live through this, you know, through him, because I think the more we seek God, then he can give clarity into what can be done. Like, you know, with the rallies or, you know, I mean, I tried writing letters. I just don't really feel like who really, I'm not saying who really reads them because you never know what someone doesn't do for me. They might do for somebody else in this position, but I never, I, I never saw myself as an impossible case. I still don't feel that way about myself. I really don't. That's the crazy thing. I feel like everybody looks at me sometimes with like pity, like, oh, that's just going to, this is going to be your rest of your life. And I just don't feel that way. I don't feel that way. And I think that bothers some of my, the people who are, I guess, in charge of my, um, <laughs> of keeping me down and oppressed. Because I really don't feel like this is the end of my life. I don't feel like I was supposed to, I'm meant to stay like so oppressed. I don't feel that in the innermost parts of my soul. I just don't believe that. I do believe things are being done to keep me here for, they want to do this for a lifetime. I just don't feel that it's, it's going to be that way. I don't feel that. And maybe it's my spirit that's telling us maybe there's an eternity. But you're not supposed, you're not going to be stuck here for, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But I don't feel like I'm supposed to be suffering like this. The rest of my human existence here on this earth. I just don't feel it. It's not. I've cried. I'm just like, I just don't believe it. I don't believe God wants me to stay stuck in this position like this. Because I don't feel I have. I mean, regardless of how much targeting has been done in my life. I feel like I've been able to actually accomplish more than I've accomplished in my whole 38 years of life. Because I, I, I was so lost in my direction and what I wanted to do. And I wasted time just drinking and just trying to hold on to a jobs. You know, now I know that they were always there. They were always intervening in my life. And then you wonder why would they intervene in a, in a miss nobody? You know, I, I wish I had a grand testimony of coming out of such thievery and such corruption. But I don't have that type of testimony. I was, maybe I didn't live... I wasn't a cookie cutter. I wasn't, I didn't have any trophies or accomplishments, 
But that's why, because I think the devil tries to destroy you from a very, very young age when you do have to do something in the kingdom of God. And so if he can stop you from realizing and getting over your insecurities and, you know, if he can stop you from from going further, then that's what he's going to do. But within the last six years, I felt like I've been doing more than with my life, more focus when this whole thing is supposed to destroy your focus. Like I, it's like a big contradiction. It's like crazy. But I really, that's what I feel. It's the grace of the Lord. It really is God. God is real. God, his spirit is real. Like I have accomplished more things in this last six years of this tar- massive targeting than I have in my whole life. Like really, you know, I've lied about things. I made mistakes, you know, in my own personal life, but I realized I, I was lost in with direction. I was seeking spiritual truth before all of this. Now I re- now I really know how the world works. And now I really know that we're all headed into, well, this whole world is headed into. To me, I do believe in the Bible, like the anti-Christian, the, the whole platform for this new world leader that's going to rise. I really I believe in all of that. I believe this is all pointing towards that. I believe that we're being persecuted, not just because people hate us, but because it is Satan himself who is trying to destroy God's people before they can do anything, before they can, like, you know, bring down God's glory through praise and worship. I really do believe there's supposed to be some sort of worldwide revivalment of the Holy Spirit, people getting baptized, sealed with the Holy Spirit because of all the disasters and all the chaos that's going to be happening. So God wants to save people. God wants to redeem people. God wants to use people now and in the coming years as that standard that's going to be lifted up towards all this chaos, all the confusion. People don't know where to turn to. People don't know who to seek. And I feel like this is it. This is it's seeking him because everybody else is, is confused. Like even the leaders that we have today, they don't, I don't really feel secure with them. They don't really feel, I don't really feel Anybody that I'm watching on TV is answering my questions like this, this thing that where I'm living or you're living, the only one who can give us answers to what we're living is in the Bible. That's where I find my peace. And that's where I find my, oh, my ahas, because I realize there is a reason besides people just thinking you did something or that you're a rat. Like to me, it's like, that's what I always hear that I'm, they call me a pig or a rat. Not just because of the way I look, but because they f- making it seem like I can't be trusted anywhere that I go. I'm like, so even if I go underwater, are they going to have the, f- the the animals underwater do this to me? Or if I go to the outer space, I mean, like, I don't understand. Like, how could there be people in this world that think that they own the world? That the, you can't, that they can't allow me to live in peace anywhere. So that's what I realized in the Bible I think like you've said before that um, blessed are those who are persecuted for his name. And it doesn't matter where you came from or what you've been through. If you are a son or daughter of God and this is happening to you, there's no other explanation. that They they won't stop. There's just too many people, uh, at least in my vicinity over here. And it's just like... Like I said, I really didn't have anything to talk about, but now I guess I do. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yep. So that's what I go through here. And, you know, some days are better than others, but I love to praise God and it's when I sing and I, I praise God, that lifts my spirit up. Like I feel at peace. I feel loved. I feel like I understand things. It's only when sometimes I feel a little down or under the weather. I feel sick. You know, you just don't have the, the strength. That's when I think the enemy or the people, the actual people who will come out to um, follow you around, they attack you more when they know that you've been through something, you've been through surgery. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was an experience. When I had, um, in 2018, I had a surgery done for fibroids in my, um, uh, over my uterus. So they removed like an 11 pound tumor. And, you know, when you're sick or you feel down, you don't want, like, it's 
going to Walmart is not a good idea or going to Costco or anywhere where there's a lot of people, try to avoid that when you're feeling really sick because that's, they know that they can, they'll do, they'll do things to try to piss you off in a department store so you can go crazy and, and yell at people and then say, look, she went crazy again. But yeah, I've had many moments and I don't really care at this point. I'm like, the proof is in, the proof is showing that some people out there will literally kill each other for a bad look. If you haven't gotten to that point, then I think you're pretty, you're doing a pretty good and awesome job handling what this mental persecution is really supposed to do to you. Because, you know, once I got that surgery done, I remember I, I literally, I, I went off in the middle of Costco and I was just like, yeah, I, I cursed and all that stuff. I always just want to pick up medication for my um, antibiotics and stuff like that for, um, you know, for the surgery that I had. And I'm just like, yeah, they didn't kick me out or anything. Everybody was just like, <laughs> I'm like, well, why are you guys walking right in front of me when you there's a whole store with empty aisles? You know, sometimes you just want to say that and it's just like, does it really matter But that I usually get like that one when I feel sick. It's that time of the month. And, you know, it's just like, and you have to go out to this war zone. And you leave your house and you're just like, like, you just look around. And you're just like, what, what is the first hundred people that will circle me and think that, that the next hundred people are going to miss? Like, how many people need to watch me walk from my house to the supermarket? Like, what is it that they think I'm going to do? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, that's what it is. But, yeah. Other than that, I'm going to um, close this live video down because I'm I'm um, basically just going to go to sleep. I'm, I think I have class tomorrow at 930, virtual, virtual class. We're getting conditioned for virtual reality, right? For the new social order. So that I think this is what all of these things are leading to. The whole thing with the virus, the whole thing with targeting, the whole thing with the natural disasters. Everything's preparing the, the platform for the for the Antichrist and all those, the, those wonderful things that they have planned for us in humanity. But God has something greater. He has the kingdom of God. He has his Holy Spirit. He has the promise of eternal salvation. So nothing beats the promises of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. So everyone, I hope you have a good night and sleep well and pray to the Lord. May the Holy Spirit cover you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. May you have a peaceful night in Jesus' name. I'm trying to end this live stream. Oh. Good night.